Today I begin scratch building Peacock's Lock Viaduct. Should be a lot of fun. I hope you'll stay tuned. Hi, I'm really glad you could join me today. Peacock's Lock Viaduct spans the Schuylkill River near Reading, Pennsylvania, about 30 or 35 miles northwest of the area I model. It's a unique bridge in that it's believed to be the only example of a pierced spandrel stone arch railroad bridge in the U.S. Apparently, there are examples of this bridge design in other parts of the world, but not here. I was looking for a unique and interesting bridge for a featured scene on my layout. I'd say this qualifies. I won't be using any styrene or other commercial products in this project. Most of the bridge will be cast out of plaster and carved. I use the measuring tools on Google Maps, my own space requirements, a little guesswork, and Photoshop to draw this mock-up. Satisfied that it captures the look and feel of the original. I refined the dimensions and drawing a bit, and finally extracted this template. I attached the paper template to a piece of half inch MDF and drilled out the piercing. My saber saw made short work of cutting the spandrel to shape. Just some light sanding was needed to refine the cut and knock down any sharp corners. I sanded a profile along the inside edges of the arches. I then sprayed the MDF template with a couple of light coats of shellac to seal it. MDF has porous sides and the silicone likes to really grab hold. I really should have given the sides a better coating. In a few spots the silicone got a good grip and I damaged the mold removing the template. It's minor and it won't affect the casting beyond needing a little more sanding along the edges. The plaster sands easily enough though. I then made the mold box and poured the mold using two-part silicone rubber. Since the casting here will be very thin, I was concerned that it might be difficult to remove from the mold since I wouldn't easily be able to peel the mold away from the casting. So using a drill and a hobby knife, I carved the relief hole so that I'll be able to squeeze the mold and loosen it from the casting. I start by filling the mold about halfway full. Since the top is so thin, I used some braided heavy duty mirror hanging wire as rebar. It was probably overkill, but I added some rebar to the sides as well, and then filled the mold the rest of the way. The casting has had about 4 or 5 hours to set up, and it's ready to come out of the mold. In hindsight, this wasn't necessary, but before pouring the plaster, I added a small dowel to the relief hole. Well, let's see how it goes. The sides are separating from the plaster very nicely. did its job.
Well, that certainly came out a lot easier than I expected. a few small air bubbles, but I'll be able to blend them in when I carve the stems. I start by cleaning up the damaged spots I mentioned earlier, then randomly knock down the corners to give a little variation, and lightly sand to dress up the casting. And here I have all 10 spandrels cast and ready for carving. I'm going for a somewhat more rustic look than the actual bridge. To get ready for carving, I printed out a couple extra copies of the template. The first one I cut along these red lines, leaving me this, which I will use to mark the individual stones for the arches and the piercing. The second template I cut along these red lines and I will use this to mark the horizontal mortar joints on the face stones. The vertical mortar joints will be cut freehand. To carve the arch stones, I start by using a compass to draw the stones onto the casting. Using a scribe, I carved the outline of the stones. I then use a carving tool to widen the groove. I'll only be doing this where the arch stones and piercing stones meet the face stones. On the original, the arch and piercing stones are slightly proud of the face stones. It looks to me to be about an inch or two. I thought about replicating that, but in HGO scale it would hardly be visible anyway. Using one of the templates I made earlier, I marked the joints between the individual stones. Then it's back to the scribe to carve the joints. Just a little touch up is needed to make sure the joints intersect where they should. And I continue carving the rest of the joints. Here I'm using a small triangular file to etch a guide down the side of the casting. I line these guides up with the carvings I just made. This will make it easier to carve the joints. Once again, I use the scribe to carve the joints.
casting is too thick to represent one stone in HO scale, so I'll carve a line down the center to split the stones in two. That's all the stones carved for the arch on one side of the spandrel. The other side will be carved using the same steps and techniques. So I'll carve that off camera. With both arches carved, I can move on to carving the piercing. The stones here are smaller than the arches, but they are carved using the same steps and techniques. You're not going to be able to see this, but I'm scoring the guidelines and carving the interior stones the same as I did on the arches. It's tough enough to get an angle where I can see. I probably should have split these stones into three instead of two, but they're not going to be very obvious on the finished bridge anyway. And here's the spandrel at this stage. And now it's on to carving the face stones. I'll use one of the templates I made earlier to mark the horizontal joints between the stones. Using a straight edge, I draw in the mortar joints, although I am looking for a little variation. I carve the joints. As I approach the end of the pass, I ease up a bit to prevent chipping out a large piece. On the second pass, I'll bear down a bit more. Randomly, I will allow a little chip out for variation. That's it for the horizontal joints. At this point, I want to clean off any remaining pencil marks, as they can become confusing when I carve the vertical joints. I simply carve the stones to be random widths, 
being careful to stagger the joints from the rows of stones above and below. During this phase, I'll brush away any dust from the carving quite frequently so it doesn't obscure where I'm carving. Here's the completed spandrel. All this stark white plaster tends to wash out some of the detail, so I'll adjust the lights and give you a better view. That took about an hour and 15 minutes. With nine more to carve, repetition will probably get that time down a bit. I'm hoping anyway. I'm going to end part one here. You probably don't need or want to watch me do that nine more times. But hey, if you do, there's always replay. In part two, I'll move on to the capstones and the interior stones making up the archways and piercings. It'll be a little while before part two comes out. Carving the spandrels is detailed and a little repetitious. And I really don't see myself doing more than one a day. So it'll likely take two weeks or so. Please bear with me. I'll be back with part two just as soon as I can get to it. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope to see you back for part two and more videos to come. Till next time.